Dear oh dear, this is Daryl as a service. You probably saw me moments ago crashing everything. That's right. Um, crash and burn. Burnout actually is the t name of the topic tonight. Um, uh, means mental health awareness of uh, mental health uh, via um, uh, Movember. And I've got a special guest friend of mine, um, Phil Worrell. Let's see if I can do this without crashing the. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit worried about pushing this button. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> yes, it works. Hello, Phil. <laughs> Hi Daryl, how are you doing? I'm good. I am. Um, I, I meant you... that sincerely. Say it again. I meant that sincerely. Oh, yes. How are Thank you. you, thank you. And and so uh, yes, uh, queuing in there with the first broadcast I did when, how's it? No, really. Um, uh, let let's talk about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but first of all, um, the uh, Movember. It's all about um, awareness of men's mental health, um, among other other uh, topics um, prostate prostate cancer always have problems trying to say that um, but you know really trying to reduce um, uh, men dying too early too young and um, the reason that this topic re resounded with me was around mental health and particularly in IT and Phil you're in IT yeah I've been in IT for nearly 30 years now so wow. uh, time yeah, definitely. Um, and I was asking you earlier about um, your Twitter handle, uh, how it, it isn't quite the spelling of your surname. Uh, it's missing an L. What's the story behind that? Uh, it's just that uh, that was my first ever Windows logging ID that I had because it was that number of characters. So yep. I had to take the first name and uh, initials and uh, only so many characters of your uh, surname. Oh, there you go. And so, yeah, there we go. It's uh, th 30 years worth of proof right there, and you've carried it with you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, with 30 years of, of experience in IT, um, that is a long time in, 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 in any kind of industry. Um, you you would have uh, had a number of different roles. Tell us a bit about, about your work history and, and sort of what you've, what you've worked through. Oh, I've been through all sorts of stuff. I started in a small uh, computer company back in the late 80s. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a clue. Um, helping out on a help desk. And throughout my career, I've done, gone through multiple different companies working on help desks and support, so end user stuff. Um, so I think about half my career has been that. The other half has been sort of project work, infrastructure. I pretty much, I've, you name it, I've pretty much done it somewhere along in IT. Yeah. But across multiple industries, and each has their own requirements of whether you're um, you're just expected just a oh it's relaxed, it's easy, there's nothing really urgent to those where everything needed to be done yesterday type yeah. of things. Um, and that's where um, one of those particular industries uh, really got me um, because it was extra stress. Um, remote from management and um, basically uh, if it plugged in, if it was uh, on a battery or you know, even I thought it was completely wireless, it was suddenly uh, my job to deal with it um, regardless. Um, so uh, yeah, pretty much uh, rough jobs in different places. But now I'm doing Office 365 SharePoint stuff, um, working for a large uh, IT provider here in Switzerland. Um, so we've got multiple customers and things, so it's, 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 it's all good keeping up with what's going on. Mm, yeah, definitely. Uh, look, I, I relate to you there with uh, starting out in a support desk, and it used to be said that that was the right place for anyone in IT to make a start so they could get familiar with um, not just base level skills, but, but people and the general need and, and knowing and recalling um, why are we here? What are we actually supporting? Um, but it's said that, uh, I think back when I was um, on the help desk, that there was, you might say, a burnout rate or at least a turnover period of time for how long someone could be on a support desk. Is, is that, what was your observations there? Yeah, it used to be. I mean, a maximum 18 months to two years. I mean, some people even didn't even last that long. Um, mainly because, I mean, as IT pros there, we are getting um we're dealing with other people's problems and a lot of the time people are they get very frustrated before they even get to calling um mm. a help desk calling an it support person to come and sort their problem out they don't call you up to give you flowers do they <laughs> no some are 
I've had some really nice people do nice things for me wow. um, in the past. So you, you get a whole mixture, but you do mm-hmm. get those certain people whose expectations is that you know how to fix something without telling you what the problem is. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of thing. And, you know, people are under a lot of stress and you don't know what they're dealing with. Um, so that's that is usually uh, most of the problem there. You know, you get a lot of angry people um, to deal with. And at the end of the day, you can take that, that anger home with you, you mm. know, because you're not expected as a customer services representative support desk, you're expected to be smiley and happy all the time. And no matter if the person's screaming at you down the phone, you've got to somewhat um, hold on to that. You know, you've got to mm. sort of calm the person. But then does that, that actually gets into, into your head and you are, um, you know, you're taking that home with you. So, yeah, so. yeah. And it's, um, uh, you know, dealing with, with people who, um, look, they just want to get back to, to working. Uh, and if something isn't working the way that it should and it's impacting their job, you can, um, you can understand. That's yet another level of stress that, that um, others are dealing with, that on a support desk we become the recipients and, and almost the, the, it's all funneled to us, isn't it? Yeah, it's totally because, you know, we're expected to deal with other people's problems, but who deals with ours, mm. right? We all need to share those sorts of those sorts of things. So. Mm, fair call. Uh, and look, I, I admit I haven't done any research into this, but um, I would say that um, organizations that uh, have a serious help desk and, and um, are, you know, seriously lo- thinking about looking after their employees, uh, I... <laughs> I could equate it to some of the stress levels that you would have in, let's say, the health industry where um, you're an ER person and, and you're dealing with loss of life and um, you know people that are constantly stressed and you need to have somewhere to, to be able to talk about that and someone to talk to about that. Think of even the law enforcement and some of the things that they go through and, and counselling that they have to um, you know go through to actually... to process some of the things that they see and, and experience exactly those, those those industries get they see the worst side of life um and they have to you know psychologically have to have to deal deal with those things and i think it's about having a network of people that you can trust and you can talk to sometimes it's your colleagues um and i think more and more we actually really should be talking to our colleagues about these things you know and sharing those sharing those things without fear of uh, retribution or you know, uh, rumors spreading and things like that. There should be an element of trust um, between you and a, a colleague. That if you say something in private, that it, you know, it it stays private unless you want to tell someone else about it. Mm. Um, most of this stuff, a lot of times, you know, that people are going through is just it's invisible. You know, people can't see it. There's nothing there, and people hide it unbelievably. Um, some people are the happiest, smiliest people in the world. Um, you hear them things like ending up with burnout and and you know suicide going on and things and you're going but mm. that person was happy that person was always the fun person in the office that and I've heard of numerous cases of that recently um, that people put on a mask you know they put on this face yeah. um, that that they have when they go they have this office face mm. as soon as they go go get in the door. They, they, they put their office face on, and that's it. They're done, they're, that's it. That's the office. And when they leave, it's it, you know, in their personal private life, it's something different. Mm. Um, you know, I, I I feel it's always good to talk about those things. Um, if it's stuff outside of work, and you you're a private person, there are people who just just want to keep everything inside them. Um, those people just need to reach out to people who are very they're close to who who are quite happy to to talk about those things. But you've also got to check yourself for. Um, levels of how stressed you are how much is going on and can you take any more are you having any physical problems you having problems concentrate you're getting any pain in your, you know you're getting headaches or anything like that and it gets to a point where you have to say i have to get professional help you know um i did that once in my career i went off and actually got professional help for a while right. um just to help cope with cope with the uh, the issues that i was having at the time and it wasn't just work issues there was personal mm. stuff as well but you know that helped me through that that stage um you know but having those confident people for a start off but then knowing when to when to push that button because guys yeah. always have a problem of they never want they never want to be seen to be weak they never want mm-hmm. to seem to be 
the people who, you know, the, the ones, you know, they, they've got to be this big, strong guy, you know, they're always, always tough, never show any emotion, you know. Mm. Um, some of those people are actually, you know, inside, they're just as fragile as anyone else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, like, uh, there's um, a conflict uh, often within us too that um, to be able to reach out for help uh, shows weakness and I put that in inverted commas because it's not weakness but um, we're making ourselves vulnerable with our employer we're saying that look we're not handling the work that that's been given to us and um, you know potentially jeopardizing our, our jobs if we think uh, if that's the case um, but you're right like two things that I pick up there it's really important to have that network of people to, to reach out to um, but so when you get to that point where you are checking yourself out and you're thinking, actually, I need a bit more help than that, um, do you have any like advice about, um, or what actually what got you to that point where you were, thought that was the right thing and you had enough assertiveness and bravery to, to take that step? It actually took me to become physically ill before I actually got to that point. Right. Um, I ended up being off... Um, off work for a while, um, but yeah, I was having major migraines and all sorts of you know physical pain and uh, pulsating headaches and and you know cold sweats and all sorts of different things going on and and I've sworn to myself I'd never go back there I'd never get to that point ever again. Um, so now I just check myself you know every day I come back from work and I'm on the way home I'm like, I'm thinking about the day, trying to process that, trying to think about my emotional state. I think, what do I need to actually address? Mm. And one of the key thing I try and do sometimes is I just write certain things down. You know, I'll, I'll just grab my phone, I'll grab one, I'll stick stuff in there or something just just to get it out of my head and onto some onto you know onto a piece of paper or onto whatever you can you can get that out. And as soon as, soon as it's there, it's it's not there. It's somewhere else. You can come back to it and you can deal with it when you're in the uh, the right mindset to deal with things. There's a, a level of acknowledgement when you externalize it, isn't it? So mm -hmm. writing it down and in some places, like if, if it's, you know, <laughs> do this privately, maybe speak it out somewhere. If, uh, some people say something, you need to have a good primal yell. But um, but having externalizing that is, is acknowledging that, you know, I had a rough day today. Um, I'm sitting here on the train or on public transport. I'm in traffic and I'm, I'm acknowledging that. And that's okay to acknowledge that it was a rough day. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and acknowledge that you're not perfect and neither is anyone else and that you can't control everything. You can't be everywhere. You can't do everything. You can't learn everything. You, you know, you can't help everybody. There's some people who just don't want to be helped. But no, help yourself first. It's like on an airplane when they talk about the safety demonstration, you know, with the, uh, with the oxygen masks. Mm -hmm. um, Put yours on first, so you can help you. So, so you can help uh, help yourself first before you can help others. Mm -hmm. um, and always be open to helping others in that in that respect as too. If someone just wants to chat for five minutes, don't just put them off. Um, thinking, yeah, okay, I'll talk to them later. You know, there may be a valid good reason why people want to want to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, uh, is there any anything you can sort of uh, share in terms of that, that story that, that would help us to recognize um, what builds us up to that point where we are burning out and we are physically getting ill? Um, I know um, in my own experience, I've got certain things in, in my IT career I can go back on and say, that, yeah, that, that was a, a hell of an experience and I got myself into a mess there. Um, Anything that you're willing to, to share and just, you know, to whatever level of detail? Well, don't don't always be forced upon by, by management or whoever to, you know, set set their expectations as well as what you know, what they want you to do. Um, they could put too much too many things on you in too short a time. You know you're not gonna get it done. You know you're gonna be you know, if you're working sixty, eighty hours a week, you know, continuously um, make sure that you address it with them, and if they're not listening, you know, look at your options. Mm. For things, you know, look look at outside. Don't don't stay in it. Don't you know? People talk about things like domestic violence. Don't stay in in an in abusive relationship. Well, work can also get like that too. So true. So, 
So uh, basically, make sure, make sure that you're not you're not being um, you're not being abused and just being given everything that there possibly is to do, because they think you're the only one that can do it, or they think that um, you know you're you're the reliable one, you're the one who's mm. the most helpful in this, so you're the one who's suddenly going to get the most work because you're willing to help and not say no. Saying no is really important. Mm. Yeah, being being realistic with what what you're able to to cope with your workload um and i think that is is something that particularly those who are um early in their career with it or, or new to it is that we we want to please um sometimes that is our our role is to support and to look after and to to lift uh, lift spirits by fixing things um but you're right yeah sometimes that means that we are um uh, have a tendency to say yes to too much um, when we know that it's okay to stretch your capabilities and push yourself to learn something a bit more, but if it's four or five projects or something that you shouldn't be doing on your own, you should be doing with support, um, you're, you're setting yourself up for a very stressful situation. Yeah, and it can be things like travel as well. People seem to just disregard the fact that you could be traveling, you could be traveling, um, you know, two, three days a week or something and expect you to somehow, somehow uh, function at 100%. Mm. Um, you know, if you're, if you're driving, uh, instead, of, instead of, you know, even if you're on a plane, people don't realize that that's still time that you're, you know, there's still time that you get tired of, of, uh, of that kind of thing. So you can't always function properly. Mm. Yep, yeah, good point. Actually, that reminds me of that blog post you pointed me to of uh, uh, a chap in uh, Dynamics 365, I forget his, his Twitter handle, do you remember? Christians, mm -hmm. the Christian something. Um, and he yeah. was talking about that very thing, that um, in consulting you can be, um, you know, going to different places and everyone looks at it and goes, oh look, you're, what a glamorous life. Um, but he talked about in this blog post that you're not there to have a holiday, you're there to work, and then when you've finished your work, you're going back to your hotel room and you're, um, well, what else are you going to do but work as well? And, um, you know, it can be quite a lonely existence, uh, you know, and, and very tiring. So, yeah, lots of, there's lots of topics there um, to explore. I don't want to keep you too much longer, mate, because you are, you are at work. <laughs> I don't want to yeah, cause any to further it. stress. But, I, look, I thank you so much for sharing some of some of your thoughts and your your stories and, um, and just... Uh, to those who have tuned in or might be watching this a bit later, um, we're not professionals, um, but you know what we're doing is sort of having that conversation, uh, which is what we encourage you to do: is is talk to someone, um, find someone who is going to listen. So when they ask, um, "How was it?" then uh, it's okay to to actually tell them a bit more. Um, and uh, you know, if you do need to get some some more professional help, that's okay. It's okay to, to actually step back and, and reach out and, and do that. Um, cheers, Phil. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's always good to, to learn a bit more and, uh, and share that, and I know that this is going to help a few people as they listen. You're welcome, Daryl. All right. We'll uh, see you again. I'll, we'll tune in with another topic and, uh, and another person. Uh, bye for now. Where is my outro? <laughs> mm -hmm.